ain't been switch. broke in a minute. Nah, nah, I tryna run these digits. Nah, nah, Put my little bro on the pin. Nah, nah, we hop out the car with extensions. Nah, nah, these niggas be pistols, they switchin'. Nah, 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 Playin' with bro, then you go on the mission. Me and my niggas, we all on the mission. Focus on money, ain't worry about bitches. Yo, what is going on, y'all? It's your boy, Vel, and we are back with another Mobile Legends video. In this one, we are going to be going over Mirko speaking on Anik and actually what went wrong, what happened, and why they ended up losing and stuff like that. But I do want to start by saying I know that there's a lot of drama, whatever you want to call it right now, going on, where um basically Endo's coming at me, saying all type of crazy stuff and stuff like that. Listen, I have nothing but love for Endo. Like, you all may not know who I am, because I've never been as popular in Indo. But the fact of the matter is, well, actually, I kind of was at one point in time. Like, when Noob Queen lost his channel and stuff like that, I was one of the first ones to shout him out and help him get his new channel. The the new Dwee Woy channel, I helped him do that. Um, then, there, like, when Just No Limit was popping and all that, um, like, back in the day, I, I was the ones, I was supporting all of these guys. I was supporting Indo at one point in time, too. Like, I really am purely unbiased and I just support whoever's hot, whoever's going hard. I give everybody their props. Um, basically, people are trying to make it seem like I'm against Indo and all Philippines and stuff like that. No, I'm just giving Philippines their credit. Like they're going hard right now. They deserve, they deserve the praise right now. They have been going really, really hard and they're doing a great job. They're carrying all aspects of Mobile Legends right now. If Indo wants that same recognition back, go back to m1 or step it up in m6 like that that's what it is i'm going to be fair and be completely like you know like and I, i'm purely talking about the m series i'm talking about the m series i'm not taking away all the accomplishments of endo or anything like that like i have a lot of respect for all countries all countries working hard trying their best even my own i, I can trash talk tob all day long because i feel like it was formed in a petty way but i still do recognize their work and effort and what it takes to actually compete even attempt to compete, at, to compete at that level. So I got respect for everybody. I still have some opinions though, and I'm gonna say my opinions. That's just what it is with me. But it's all love. I love all aspects of the community. So don't don't feel like I have a problem with anybody or anything like that, no. I just give you all my opinions because I'm, I'm passionate too, like, you know? So yeah, that being said, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications, and let's jump into the video, y'all. And I also saw Venus's statement on like, uh, Boots being the one who underperformed. I think I'll have to agree as well, to be honest. Uh, I think me, you, everybody in the cast, uh, yeah. and all the pro players as well, when we talk to them in lunch, lunch, dinner, breakfast, when we're talking about Onik, we, we always just say like, yeah, I think Boots is underperforming real hard, especially against Blacklist. I remember yeah. that Blacklist match, Onik Blacklist, should have been a 3-0, bro, if Boots just played properly, but he was missing <sighs> raging sandstorms, flickering yeah. out, etc., like making so many minor mechanical mistakes, and yeah. in the grand finals, I think he only had one really good game on the Paquito, and then everything else was uh, very mediocre. And that's yeah. not normal for Boots, because if you take a look at Season 11, if you take a look even in the in MSC, when they beat Blacklist and Echo, Boots was doing so good. He was I agree. holding his own against Sanford, against Edward, maybe even better, right? Because he beat... And what I have a, I have a lot of respect for Mirko. Um, he is very well educated on the whole space as a whole. So... Even with me challenging his views, what you got to understand, people start to make a bunch of arguments that I wouldn't even, I wouldn't put myself in a conversation that I'm not going to win. Like, so if I'm making a point, try to understand my point, because more than likely, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and argue that I have the same amount of game knowledge and, and esports knowledge as someone like Mirko. This is what he does. This like, this is literally what he does. He me, I watch it as a casual fan every now and then or when some big event is going on like that that's when that's when i pop up and check it out i'm not here every single day studying it like a like studying the craft and art and things like that so i would never sit here and try to argue certain things i just have strong opinions about other things where it's like certain things are just obvious to me that i would speak about but i do respect how um how how Merc, uh, how Merkel sees the scene as a whole and i do understand where he's coming from i this is what I feel about the, Indo the, the in Indonesians. This is what I feel about Indo. I feel like they are doing good business. What they're doing with, they're doing good business as opposed to wasting their time trying to become the Philippines. I feel like from a business standpoint, they're doing a good job just bringing Filipino players in, 
and that's going to help boost the endo players and that's going to boost their their winning potential and things like that so it's an easy cheat code for them that's good from a business standpoint now from a country morale and country pride standpoint you're that's just not the recipe to have a country like the philippines the philippines is just so prideful so dominant so you know the philippines they they built that themselves organic so and and then they <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me yo they also do good business in the philippines as well like maybe it's not as much money as an endo but the philippines is doing really good like clearly so <clears throat> when you look at this you start to realize that and i'm not i'm not trash talking endo in, in a sense that they're doing bad business i just don't think that i think that they're more lazy than the philippines that's all that's the only statement that i was basically saying it if them being more lazy is a bad thing or a good thing or however you want to interpret that, that's your own opinion. That's just how I feel, you know? So it's not even necessarily a bad thing. Like, I'm a, I'm lazy when it comes to work. If I can sit around and do nothing and make money doing it, <laughs> what would I rather do? Would I rather work all day super hard or would I rather sit around and do nothing? I would rather sit around and do nothing. Like, what do you mean? Like, if I would be lazy too, but I'm just saying, listen, if I would want to be lazy, I know lazy when I see it. Like, what are you, what are, what are you talking about? But anyway, let's go back. Beat them. Yeah. But it feels so different here. I don't know. And uh, I think it's CW and Sans who are really the two standouts. For sure. And For the first time, it's not like, it's not Kyrie, it's not Keyboy, you know? It's CW and Sans. I think. I mean, Kyrie was getting, they was banning his hero pool. He was on tanks and stuff like that. Like, how's he going to really carry with the meta shift? Um, and, and I never felt like, uh, I, I never tried to take away from his team. I mean, maybe the statements that i made does take away from the team a little bit, saying that they're getting carried by the Philippines. But the fact of the matter is, Kyrie just plays at an insanely high level. But his teammates are really good as well. Like, like Keyboy be putting in work. Keyboy be going crazy. I, I, all of them. All of them are, are, are really, really great players. So it is a team effort, but Kyrie does stand out amongst them all. Like, I'm just saying, like, obviously Michael Jordan stands out. LeBron stands out. Steph Curry stands out. Messi stands out. Like certain players just stands out. And Kyrie is one of those players, man. So yeah, respect to Kyrie. And respect to the whole team as a whole. Like everyone is still, you know, like. I think the others yeah. underperformed a bit. Kind of makes me think, like, what what actually happened? Because I mean, for Kyrie, you he was good all year long. Mm. Yeah. Gave two titles to Arnik, yeah. gave an embassy with a legendary performance. Yeah, group stages of M five, Kyrie was he was amazing, amazing. Even easily the knockout stages, yeah, easily the MVP of the tournament. Right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. come the finals, what is this? And I can't. I mean, I love Coach Yev, uh, all my heart. Their drafts were good, but it kind of felt like it does not make Kyrie. Yeah, know, it forces him on utility a lot. Yeah, right? I mean, and and then they picked up yeah. this Hayabusa. That's the only time where I can say, man, it's a stretch. Yeah, yeah. So that was uh, that, that was mainly mainly my main qualm about like however Onik performed. I think all of the drafts made a lot of sense mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. Onik, right? Um, even the Eve, right? The last pick. Uh, I think the the only gripe I've have I've had with that it's it's Kadita plus E, which is uh, yeah difficult. But I think uh, about it like um, Baksha versus Fredrin. I think it's mainly because of the choices of AP Brain. I think their Fredrin flavor in the grand finals was the winning yeah uh, winning centerpiece. I would say for um, AP Brain, and I don't think that Onik were out drafted in a way. But uh, I kind of felt like it didn't feel like an Onyx uh, series mm -hmm. after that. So um, I do agree with uh, Venus's statement where it was Boots that yep. underperformed. And it's funny because uh, she mentioned that uh, Boots was always 2 to 3k gold behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And prior to that statement, I was actually... Uh, I've had a podcast with uh, Kid Bomba and yep. off cam we were talking about like... Boots is also underperforming all throughout mm -hmm, the tournament mm -hmm. in a way that he always loses economy. Yeah, which I all it's funny because uh, uh, Venus told uh, Venus mentioned in the video it's two to three k behind, and that's also what I said to Kid Bomba. Mm -hmm. um, he is a very sacrificial one, but the, but then if you look at the entirety of the successful teams in 
um, in M, uh, in the knockout stages in M5 in general, they love putting a lot of money in their explain. Yeah. So the damage, the full damage Paquito, the full mm-hmm. damage Khalid, your uh, impactful uh, the full views even, yeah. you know. Um, so that's what I'm trying to say. Like, uh, I think that Onik didn't show up as a team, you know, the entirety of them during the grand finals. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then AP brand was just... They were the better five. five. Better five, for yeah. sure. Better, you know, even the coaching staff adjusted well, despite... <laughs> Despite missing a ban. Yeah, yeah, that was a weird one. I asked yeah. Ducky uh, right after, right? Right after they won. What, what was that about? And yeah, they just, uh, the player, they, they didn't uh, tap it in time. So it's just a mistake. But they, yeah. so everybody was panicking apparently. Yeah. <clears throat> so there we have it, man. Um, so they, they're they saying Boots. And I guess, guess that's how you pronounce his name. I thought it was Butts. But um, yeah, I guess... Uh, they they believe that it was boots. I've been hearing that a lot, and yeah, I mean, it's multiple different things. I've seen people say that the game was over already by the time Kyrie dove in those bushes, but from the the voice can the voice uh little footage that we saw, we we saw him jump into the bushes when he died. He told everybody back back back, and they didn't all go back. So it's like it's multiple different little mistakes and stuff that you can point to. We don't really know like what would have happened if certain things would have went differently. What we do know is all the things just did not go right. And what happened happened. So better luck next time. I guess we will see. Um, but yeah, that, that being said, like I believe that Endo has potential. Obviously, Endo is in the conversation for a reason. Um <clears throat> I feel like a lot of people think that maybe I don't have respect for Endo, but I do. I mean, I'm just not going to sit here and let you think that you're OP or something when that hasn't been proven. Like, if you prove that you're OP, I'll be the first one showing you respect. I'll be like, okay, y'all did it. Especially if it's a team without a Filipino on it that that's carrying, that that dominates somebody, then you're going you gonna to hear it from me. You're going to be, okay, they, they, they Endo just dominated. But, I mean... Listen, you opened yourself up to the whole, even if even if you catch a win, it's only because you got a Filipino on the team. Y'all kind of opened yourself up to that dynamic. So it's, it's hard to have pride when, you know, you can only win with a certain country. So it's like, I'm not trying to take anything away from Endo. I have a lot of respect for Endo. But we, ha- we are a long way past the just no limit days, the aura the freaking um lemon like we like endo used to really be out here you gotta bring make endo great again that, that's what gotta happen man that's what gotta happen but let me know what you all think and, and maybe it's gonna become the age of the imports that's cool like i'm not judging for it i'm just saying it's always more prideful to have only your country but just my thoughts. Let me know what you all think. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.